Hi everyone, my name is George and welcome to the Anime Grove. Today we're watching Saga of Tanya the Evil, episode 4. During last episode we learned that um, being X, the one I usually call God in this show, um, is actually besides an omnipresent, omni omniscient and almighty being, is also I all petty being word that I just made up but um he's so they're so petty I mean uh they decided to punish Tanya over and over because Tanya doesn't believe in them and when Tanya seems to be even striving and being having a successful take on the challenge that being X had thrown at her face, uh, they still have to force, the, force Tanya to acknowledge them by forcing them to pray every time they want their flying gear to work. I mean, if they don't want to suddenly fall off a huge distance and obviously immediately die as soon as they hit the floor, they have to pray to a god they don't ac even acknowledge. I mean, they know they exist because uh, Tanya knows they exist because they've spoken, they've interacted, but she still doesn't acknowledge being ex as a god. In any case, this um, forced Tanya to further her relationship with the crazy doctor slash inventor that we met last episode, the one developing all those new jewelry, all that new jewelry, and developing the special jewel that uh, Tanya carries. In any case, I think uh, last we saw she's departing to the military academy, I think was her destination, and yeah, that's basically it. I wonder what will, what the future's got in store for Tanya. Now that we that that we are up to date, basically we we are already past the episode one timeline. But yeah, this is not a market substitute. So grab your legal copy and watch it along with me. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more content in this channel. And now, without any further ado, let's get into it. Saga of Tanya the Evil, episode four. She looks so cute. But no matter how cute she looks, never forget she's actually a middle-aged, heartless, cold businessman that only wants to get the best out of you and then dump you because they only think of efficiency. Um, in any case, yeah, <laughs> she's pretty cute. 6 a.m., that's so fucking early. That's so outrageous. So one year's passed, right? Because I think last episodes were on 1923 and it's 1924 now. Okay, so over six months. Campus life. So they're actually pretty smart. Remember, they actually have the experience of a 36 year old, I think. They might have been before dying, plus uh, Tanya's age. It's a therapeutic. So, after all, she's still planning on killing it. But I guess being ex can read Tanya's mind, right? That's how they know how, much, how people don't actually think of good and evil anymore. And what's right and what's wrong. As they, say, as they said when Tanya died the first time. 
This is the guy I don't, I don't trust. He might be a being ex spy. They're drinking milk? That's cool. Is that something that used to happen in Germany? People drinking milk on the streets? I mean, during that period. Or wait, I previously said she's. It's. I previously said that I think it's a pretty stupid idea to try to teach someone a lesson by placing them on another world but giving them overpowered powers. But what if all of this entire world is created? for her and that's why she's overpowered because it, this is all kind of like a video game and things are supposed to happen because she's the main character and she's supposed to win and all that stuff and that's why she was able to win uh, when she fought 1v9 1v10 I don't know when she fought the entire platoon that may that might explain uh, what this man believes what this man means about uh, one's destiny. Um, there are so many questions. I mean, maybe I'm trying to read into it too hard, but um, it's a bit fishy. Oh, right, this might develop the same way our second world war or our first world war developed so maybe she's got the intel advantage you destroyed in a single sentence that's how you shoot into your that's how you shoot your own food. She's going to get herself that job, that precise job, in the front, in the front line. See, would you need? They're planning on sending her to the front line. Are they treating it as a report from the future? I doubt so, but what does this mean? He knows it's true. He knows it's Tanya. One of the twelve knights. That sounds so cool. She's playing on him. She's playing him, right? I thought. I mean, we saw she became a military because she became a soldier because she's extremely magically gifted. So she saw an easy job. Poor man. I like this man. She's actually worried about him. Worried for him. Or is she playing him still?
See, that's what I said. He's listening to Tanya and he's going to put her as the head of the squad. I wonder if Tanya will now be so easy to dismiss human life as she did on episode 1. Okay, so she's one of the 12 knights too. Are we going to meet them all? Are they all exceptional people? Or maybe are some of them just higher ups with not act no actual fighting power? <laughs> I love how her uh, chair is completely different to the others. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost on military hierarchy, high hierarchy, sorry, uh, so I don't know who's actually above who, but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it. So I thought she's, she had already read that. Her own words come to bite her ass now. <laughs> Will Serebriakov come back? I hope she, I hope she does, because I love her, but I hope she doesn't if she's going to be killed. Is it Serebriakov? Let's go! Serebriakov! So extra. I thought something important would appear, but I see it wasn't the case. It's funny because this guy reminds me of um, the other guy, the other military guy that has appeared a lot too, the one with glasses and purple hair that uh, wrote a report on Tanya, the one that got mad that. Uh, this task force had been uh, created. So this guy reminds me of him. I don't know if it's just a coincidence. Maybe there's going to be some kind of mindfuck and it's actually him in the future. Some kind of crazy stuff. Um, so now Tanya is going to war again for the third time, if I'm not wrong. and. Her dream to stay in the rear echelon is further and further away. Uh, she's now the head of a task force, a mages task force, I believe, mm, dedicated to wiping enemy squads, I think, like a rapid response task force. Uh, this will skyrocket Tania's position on the army although it's going to be extremely dangerous for her. We know, or at least I think, that she's safe, nothing's going to happen to her, given she's our MC, our main character, and 
being X said there would be no more reincarnations when the Tanya died. Um, still, I think, well, not I think, uh, we know that Tanya isn't aware of her plot, of her armor plot, is aware of her plot armor, so she's of course going to be scared uh, to know she's going to the front lines and she's going to be on an even more dangerous position than the average frontline soldier. In any case, I guess that's just it for today. Thank you so much for visiting my channel and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace out.